Coming up on today's episode of Going Bush, we search for one of the most threatened birds in the world and look at how threatened species affect forestry in Tasmania. We look at the cycle of seed and a new tourist road through the Tarkine. See from the air exactly where the Tarkine loop will go. All right, no time to muck around on today's program, Andrew, because we've set ourselves something of a task. We've come here to the Wailangta State Forest. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, to look at the issue of endangered species. Nick, we are like David Attenborough and his film crew today. We are looking at one of the rarest birds on the planet, the swift parrot. They're called swift parrots because they're so fast. Swift parrots only visit Tasmania in the summer months. They spend the rest of the year as far afield as Queensland, but every year without fail they come back to the island state to breed and to feed on their favourite food, flowering blue gums. The swift parrot is a, is a magnificent looking bird and it's, a, it's a, a, f a fairly small parrot that most people probably would never, never see. It's, it does fly extremely fast, it may well be flying around people's yards but they very seldom get to see it. And I guess that's one of the problems with some endangered species is that even if they are beautiful, we don't have a lot of experience of them and it's very important that people actually recognise that some of these species are in need of our help. It's a fantastic bird. It's a migrant parrot, one of only a couple in the world. It's also uh, rather unique. It's got no close relatives. And it comes to Tasmania every summer from the mainland, southeast Australia. So it only breeds here and it just loves these forests. For instance, where we're standing now, this blue gum forest is just right for it. Incredibly vulnerable with only 1,000 breeding pairs left in the wild, the swift parrot has suffered from land clearing ever since European settlement in Australia. Our search for the bird has taken us to the southeast coast Wailangta State Forest. Yeah, so this is the sort of habitat that we're talking about. This is the perfect feeding habitat for swift parrots, these mature blue gums here with lots of flowers in the canopy. That's what they really like. Uh, they're very difficult to spot. I did see some I heard some earlier and I've caught a glimpse of one but when they're settled they're, they're so well camouflaged and then when they fly they zip through the trees and very difficult to spot. Well we came to Wailangta today not expecting to see any swift parrots uh, but as soon as we hopped out of the car uh, Simon Grove said you know oh I can hear them that they're here they're here. Yeah. Uh, that's him saying they're here but and yeah. we thought oh yeah but then you know a few minutes later we, we sort of started seeing them zip about the trees and we actually got a shot of one. We certainly have seen swift Parrots, very fast. Whether they are in fact swift parrots, but we have seen swift parrots, we're assured that there are. But what makes them, I guess, a, a difficult kind of species to manage is the fact that they need a couple of things. They need this yes. in Tassie, which is the blue gum flower, their which food. they feed on. They need that in close proximity to old dead trees where they live. With hollows in them, yeah, yeah. that's where they nest. Yeah. A good way to pick them is the sound, you know, yeah. the, the, the swift parrot call. I think I've got it down pat, actually. Yep. He's just up there now. That's amazing, yeah, just... I reckon we've seen um, about 0.15% of the, the global population in this little area. Tasmania has uh, a responsibility to the whole of Australia to protect the nesting habitat of the swift parrot because they only nest in Tasmania. And I guess a lot of that responsibility is Forestry Tasmania's because they have a lot of that habitat remaining, but also private landowners. The swift parrot has been on the endangered species list for 10 years now. They are so difficult to manage because they are so nomadic and a new approach has been taken and special areas are being set aside. The approach we've taken in the southern forests is that I suppose in essence it's, uh, it's possible to be pro swift parrot without being anti-forestry and we want to do the right thing for the swift parrot while still allowing us the, the legitimate timber harvesting. Um, the threatened species section did some really intensive surveys of swift parrots in the southern forests over the last year or two and that's enabled us to identify some speebers as we call them, uh, swift parrot important breeding areas. And these are areas that we're going to um, have marked on our geographical information systems within forestry and within those speebers, specific management prescriptions will apply to any harvesting operations. The speebers will also um, include designation of some substantial areas of mature forest as breeding areas for the swift parrot, uh, as well as we'd, we'll be setting aside some areas that to become future breeding habitat or future feeding habitat as well. 
Threatened species are a big part of what forestry Tasmania do, Nick, and the swift parrot is a classic example. I mean, the bird is only, say, yay big mm. from my experience with it, that's yep. what I've seen. Uh, but it, it, the little bird has the potential to, to well, stop forestry in its tracks. That's exactly right. Here at Wailangta, which is a well-known swift parrot habitat, yes. there is currently a moratorium on all forest harvesting. And more interesting is the southern forest around yes, Jeeves. Which, which is very productive from a forestry point of view. But weren't thought to be big in the swift parrot radar. Yes. Um, with the drought and so on, the swifties have been moving down in that area. So in areas where they've found them there, yes. stopped harvesting as well. Swifties, eh? Swifties, yeah. that's what I call it. Yeah, no, you... Me and the Swifty like that. The work that's been done so far by the scientists is actually quite impressive. It's, uh, we're yet to see an actual decision to set aside areas of habitat to protect nesting areas. That's yet to come into the future, but the work being done by the scientists is actually quite impressive. We think that if it does actually get fully supported, that we will actually see most of the key areas for, for the swift parrot set aside and protected. It's not just Forestry Tasmania who are working to save the swift parrot. Private landowners in the state's southeast, which is the main hotspot for the Swifties, can do their bit as well. Bits of bush that are on private land that are in a poor condition to be regenerated, protected from, say, overgrazing or excessive firewood collection. Um, we can replant bluegums. We have to be careful where we do it because we don't want to encourage parrots into areas where they're going to come into conflict with traffic and housing and so on. because. That's another problem with these birds, they are swift and they very often fly into buildings and so on. Swift parrots breed in forests with flowering blue gum and old hollow bearing trees. They may nest in a different place each year depending on where the blue gums are flowering. And special areas will be set aside on state forests to provide this breeding habitat for swift parrots into the future. Now stay with us on Going Bush. Coming up after the break, we look at the latest news about another of Tasmania's endangered birds, the biggest of them all, the wedge-tailed eagle.